hi everybody. In this CSS exercise, you can learn to use the viewport length values to size elements in relation to the entire viewing area. The way that it differs from normal percentage lengths is that these lengths are always relative to the viewport and not relative to their parent elements. And it also helps to make text and other elements sized relative to the viewing area to keep things more in proportion. For this exercise, we're going to start with a blank document that we set the body margin to zero. Now we have a style rule all set up for our div, and you can see our div is sitting right here. So if we take a peek at what this renders, not much going on. Okay, so first thing we'll do is set the width property to 50 viewport width, 50% of the viewport width. Now let's give it a background color, and let's take a look at what that renders. So you can see our div is 50% of the viewport width and even as we resize it. Now let's do the same for the height 50 viewport height 50 percent of the viewport height. See what that renders? So now you can see as we resize the viewport it's going to be half the width and half the height. Now let's go ahead and set the font size to 3 VW 3 percent of the viewport width. See what that renders? Now watch as I resize the text is going to stay pretty much relative because we set the font size to the viewport width. Now let's go ahead and set the margin property for how we usually center things and set margin space around things. We'll set this to 25 of the viewport height for the top and bottom margins and then 25% of the viewport width for the left and right margins. Now we should get a box that's centered directly in the screen. Or in the viewport. Yep. And as we resize it, it stays directly in the center. Now if you tried to set the font size using percentages or EM or pixel values, you wouldn't get that effect. And if you tried to set this to percentages, normal percentages, for the margin, watch what happens. You see it's not directly centered in the viewport. So that's where it comes in a little handy. Okay, now we're going to do experiment with the viewport minimum and viewport maximum. So I'm going to set this to Vmax, and I'm going to give you guys uh, details about what these actually mean and what, they, what they're relative to. At the end of the video, I'll show you a little sheet that explains it. Let's go ahead and comment out this centering margins. So let's change the height to Vmax, and let's see how that responds. I think if we view the height, it'll give us a better representation. Okay, so you can see as I change the width, the height is growing. See how I'm changing the width of the browser window or the viewing area? The height is also getting bigger along with the width. So when you set Vmax, it's 1%, or in this case 50%, but the Vmax represents 1% of whichever is larger, the viewport width or the viewport height. Now you can do the same for Vmin, which it will be a unit that's equal to 1% of whichever is smaller, the viewport width or the viewport height. So let's take a look at that. Now as I'm resizing, but once the width gets smaller than the height, watch what happens. You see, the height is now scaling down. So those are things that you can't get with regular percentages. All right, so let me put this back on VH and uncomment this. And this is the example that we'll have on the page. Now in my new CSS code reference library at developphp.com, I have a little value reference section. And here we're discussing length values. And here at the bottom, you can see where I've detailed what VW, VH, Vmin, and Vmax are equivalent to. They're 1% relative to the viewport. So if you put a 25, that would be 25% of the viewport width or the viewport height or the Vmin and Vmax. And you can also check out the other length values that we have here because all of them can be used in your CSS. And where they say experimental here, that means they're, they're new. So they might not work in old browser software, but they work in all the new popular ones.